Oh, hey, didn't see you there. I was just checking out this hip new app called TF2 Amino. Amino is a mobile network of communities for every possible interest, and TF2 Amino is one of my absolute favorite communities. It's really fun to take quizzes that test my knowledge about the game, like this Guess the Map quiz. It's also really useful to find people to play with by using the voice and text chats. Now, I'm actually going to be doing a Q&A session in Amino, and I'll be answering as many questions as I can about two days after this video is posted, so be sure to ask me something you'd like to know. To join this Q&A, click the link in the description to download Amino on iOS or Android. It's completely free, and once you're on Amino, search TF2 to join. Thanks again, Amino, for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys join, and I'll see you out there. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Team Fortress 2 tutorial video. Now, today I'm going to be talking about one aspect of playing heavy that I see a lot of newer players tend to lack in. Heavy versus heavy fights. And understandably so. Generally, these fights are extremely contextually based, so it's very hard to know exactly what to do in a given situation. I've broken this video up into several chunks describing several different encounters that you may run into, as well as some common strategies and things that you should be aware of before engaging in a fight. Here are the categories with the timestamps, so feel free to jump around the video and find the segment that you feel like would benefit you the most, or watch all of it, whatever you'd like to do. Heavy has an arsenal of about five different primary weapons, and each has their own advantages and disadvantages over one another. Usually, the two you'll run into when playing Heavy would be the Stock or the Tomislav. Now, generally, when fighting the Heavy, there are three things you should be aware about. Damage, readiness, and tracking. Damage is pretty simple, usually it just depends on who is revved and firing first, but in some cases, the resistances from the Natasha or Brass Beast can allow the Heavy to live a little bit longer, which would allow him to output more DPS than his opponent, even though the gun itself does less damage. So here are the miniguns in order from the highest DPS to the lowest DPS. The Brass Beast, Stock, Hulong Heater, Tomislav, and the Natasha. However, it is important to note that the Tomislav is more likely to land shots than any of the other miniguns at a range, and the Hulong Heater does roughly 13% more damage than the stock if the enemy is on fire. Now, that's not to say that DPS is the only thing to take into account when it comes to what makes a weapon viable when fighting heavies. Readiness is also very important to keep in mind. After all, whoever has the quicker draw is more likely to output more damage and win the fight. The prime example would be if the Natasha Heavy, the lowest damaging minigun, caught a Brass Beast off guard, they would likely win the fight because of the insane amount of time it would take for the Brass Beast to even start firing. So, here is a list of from the quickest to the slowest miniguns in their deploy time. The Tomislav, Stock, Hulong Heater, Natasha, and Brass Beast. Generally, if someone is using the Brass Beast or Natasha, they have to be much more alert because if they get caught off guard, they will really suffer some major consequences. Well, someone using the Tomislav is able to quickly rev up and kill their attacker if they do get jumped when they're off guard. Now, when it comes to tracking, there isn't really much to say for each specific weapon because this is down to each player's own skill. But I will say that the Natasha does make it easier to track, so if you are newer to playing heavy, I would recommend starting with a Natasha because it would allow you to get better at tracing enemies with M1. And a little side note here, the Tommy Slav is ever so slightly harder to track with, mainly because of the slower firing rate. Generally when it comes to weapons, the more DPS the weapon has, the more likely it's going to be to win the fight. Except at mid-range, the Tomislav may beat out the stock in certain situations due to the improved accuracy, but it also has roughly 15% less DPS than the stock. So even then it's not impossible for the stock to beat out the Tomislav. Actually it's fairly RNG to be perfectly honest with you, because they both have random spread. Fact of the day! In case you didn't know this, the minigun doesn't have 200 shots. It actually has 800 shots. Or, well, pellets to be exact. Each shot fires four pellets in a random spread, like that of a shotgun, just at a very, very rapid rate, which explains the exponential amount of damage at close range and the few shots that actually are able to land at a long distance. 
With the Tommy Slav, these pellets are more closely grouped, but only by 20%, so at extreme distances, it only slightly helps, but ultimately, it's up to the RNG of the spread that determines if these shots will actually land. Unless you're playing comp, in this case, they are all in a square pattern. So this is one of the more unheard of aspects of Heavy that I don't expect a lot of newer players to really know right off the bat. Ever since the summer of 2014, Heavy has had this damage ramp up. Now, trust me, it's not as bad as most people would expect. The entire time I've been playing Heavy, it's been like this, and it does explain why some Heavy fights seem completely RNG. Now, how this works is when you first start firing, you have 50% accuracy and 50% damage of what you'd expect. After one second of firing or being revved, it will reach its maximum amount of damage and accuracy. Now, one second may not seem like a long time, but I assure you, it is very important and it's longer than it seems. An example of how long one second actually is, you can fire 10 rounds as heavy in one second. So next time you're playing heavy, fire 10 shots, and that's how long it takes to reach the maximum accuracy and damage for your minigun. So if you're a heavy and you see another heavy revved, you're already at a significant disadvantage, however you may still be able to win the fight if you jump him from an angle he's not already watching, because by the time he turns around you'll already have a decent amount of damage ramp up and be able to win the fight. Keep in mind, just because you do 100% damage after one second of firing doesn't mean you should be revved all the time. Don't be afraid to walk around normally. Besides, usually this damage ramp up only comes into play when you're fighting either a horde of enemies or another heavy. Other than those instances, however, it's unlikely that you'd notice a stark difference when it comes to gameplay. So now that you got the prelude of what to take into account before engaging in another heavy, let's talk actual strats. Now some of these strats are best used when fighting an enemy heavy, but don't be afraid to try them out in combat with non-heavy enemies, they're actually quite useful. The first and most important strat is a small bug in the source code that can be greatly manipulated by the Heavy to give them a huge advantage. This simple bug is the fact that all classes, including Heavy, shoot out of their heads. I actually made a video on this a pretty long time ago, so I'm just going to let myself do the talking. That is that the Heavy fires out his eyes, not the barrel of his gun. Even though it looks like he's firing out the barrel with the muzzle flash and all, I assure you it comes out his face. Like take this wall in Gorge for example. As you can see my perspective it looks like I'm over the wall, but in reality the Heavy is just kind of shoving his barrel through the wall and his head is kind of peeking over. And that's because the Heavy shoots out his head, not through the barrel. And the reason this may be useful when fighting Heavies is because simply you have less of your body exposed and can theoretically output as much damage as they are able to, while only a little bit of you is exposed. If you are ever on the losing end of this battle, I'd advise retreating because you have a much smaller target that you can deal damage to. Plus, it's very unlikely that their aim is so bad that you'd be able to actually win that fight. I'm not saying that it's impossible to win in this situation, you just put you at a severe disadvantage, and it's also dependent of how good that head high wall is. If it's only like chest high, even you can might you might be able to win that. The next one is a fairly common strategy that I've seen a ton of heavies use, although some I've seen use this incorrectly. Rev jumping. Now the general idea with rev jumping is jumping up and revving so you have your initial inertia while you're revving up your minigun. This generally is useful for jumping around corners or just to be more agile in general. However, if you are anticipating running into an enemy heavy that is already revved, it is actually better to rev up first and then confront him at the speed of a snail. This way you won't have to worry about any damage ramp up or any potential knockback. This next one is something so simplistic yet I seldom see it being used. Many people forget that you can actually move when you're shooting given you move extremely slowly, but you can still move nonetheless. I'd recommend using this movement to get into a better position or use it to throw your opponent's aim off. This is especially useful if you're able to waddle off a ledge or up to a head high wall because it makes you that much harder to hit. You can also walk forwards or backwards, which may be beneficial for you depending on the gun you're using and your current state in the clash. If you're winning, I'd advise getting closer and really cement the win. Well, if you're losing, try falling back a tad bit so the accuracy becomes worth for both of you and you may be able to escape with your life. And playing off this idea, don't be afraid to forfeit a fight and just unrev and walk away. However, I'd only advise retreating if you're decently far away, because at point blank, you'll probably be dead before you finish unrevving. This final tactic is virtually the complete opposite of what I just said. If you are in a position where you're likely to take an absurd amount of damage and there is no way to avoid it, I'd recommend crouching when in combat. This essentially halves your hitbox, and it makes you much harder to hit because you're that much smaller, so the accuracy may allow you to survive some of the damage. 
Now, it is important to note that when you're revved and crouching, you cannot move at all. So if you do this, be ready to soak up a ton of damage, because even a brain-dead squirrel would be able to track you at this state. If you are playing against a noob heavy, try strafing rather than this strat, because they are more likely to suck at aiming. So, when you strafe, they can't hit you. While if you crouch, you may be able to take a reduced damage, but you're still going to be taking a lot more damage than if you just strafed. This one is generally better to use against someone you know will hit you no matter what, like a really god tier heavy. Ultimately, these are just a few strats that you can use to turn the tide into your favor, but even if you do everything right, you still may lose the fight because of how situational these are. After all, everything I've set up till now has been theoretical. In a perfect world where it's 1v1 and you both have the same skill level and the same loadout, but as I've always tried preaching, heavy works best with a team. It's super unlikely that you'll see a worthwhile enemy heavy that doesn't have a teammate with him. Most likely this teammate will be a medic. As we all know, medic with a heavy is the real threat. Obviously, a good heavy by himself can do a stupendous amount of damage, but when a good heavy has a medic, oh boy, it's like cranking the dial up to 11. So when it comes to medic heavy combos, there are three different mediguns that can really spice up any conflict. The medigun slash Kritkrieg, the vac, and the quick fix. Each one has their own use, but generally if you see a heavy being pocketed by the vac, you are at a severe disadvantage. Just that fight, you're probably going to lose. The quick fix also tends to give the pocketed heavy an advantage in certain situations, but generally if you're fully overhealed with a stock or Kritzkrieg, you have a fighting chance against the quick fix. However, if you are in the situation against the vac heavy, I would advise waiting for backup or at least getting severe advantage in another field, like having a really good head-high wall nearby. This is due to the fact your only damage type is a steady stream of hitscan bullets, and each bullet would do significantly less damage on a vac heavy. Plus, they are likely to have uber charge at almost any time, which means that they can pop uber, and when they pop uber, each one of your shots does 1-3 to three damage. Also, if you are in the poor situation of fighting a vac heavy, remember to aim for the medic first, because while he may have the resistance, he doesn't regain health as quick as the heavy would when he's being healed. Now, when it comes to the other mediguns, I typically aim for the heavy first, which is quite contrary to what other classes typically would do. A med pick is one of the most useful ways you can give your team an advantage in, so naturally, it's open season when you see a medic. But as heavy, it's more beneficial to start locking down a specific target and then continuing to the next target. Now, let's say that you start attacking the medic first. He would immediately start to retreat and probably would call it to his heavy to help save him. In this moment, you would have two choices. Kill the medic and die, or turn around and get into a heavy fight that you have no advantage in, and let the medic escape. So, most heavies I know would probably say, fuck it, kill the medic. So boom, good job, their med is dead, but since you had a medic of your own this whole time, since you died, your medic has no one to protect him and will likely die as well. Well, that may be an outcome you could be satisfied with, I think we could do better. So let's try running it my way. Instead of immediately attacking the medic, aim for the heavy, who hopefully doesn't know you're there, preoccupied or not ready for the heavy to jump him. At this moment in time, as previously stated, you have the advantage. Remember when I said earlier there are a number of factors that go into who would have the advantage in a heavy clash, but for this example, let's assume that you aren't an idiot and you're not charging into a fight you're already on the losing end of. So, because you have the advantage for some reason or another, you are exceptionally likely to win this fight against him. Now, during this fight, which will take anywhere from 1 to 5 seconds, the enemy medic will likely do everything in his power to keep the heavy alive. And yes, I am aware that a more skilled medic could win the fight for his heavy with the crossbow and some other medic tricks. But, let's just assume for simplicity that both medics are equally skilled. Now, while this medic does what he can to keep this heavy alive, he's not retreating, or at least not at his top speed. He's still kind of sticking around to see what he can do. So after you kill the enemy heavy for however long that takes, the medic is now relatively close, after all he was just trying to heal that person that you just finished fighting, and your medic is still safe. Now, it is likely that you'll be able to kill the enemy medic, but I can't firmly say one way or the other what's bound to play out because it's too situational. I would place my odds that you kill the enemy medic, especially if it's a pub, but in competitive he might have been backing up this entire time, or he might have some teammates right around the corner, you can't really know for certain, but in a pub, you'll likely kill the medic as well. Now there is the possibility that during this clash the enemy heavy decides to go for your medic rather than gunning for you, which is the smarter move, because they probably realize that they've lost against you, but they can still do a number against your team as a whole by killing your medic. At this point, you only have really one thing you could do, keep your medic alive body block like there is no tomorrow. Now, you can't really move all that much, and it's mostly up to your medic to hide behind you, but you can still do your best to shuffle in front of him. 
Then, after killing the enemy heavy, I'd recommend giving the medic a sandwich before proceeding, unless there's a medkit nearby. Now, this has been primarily focused if you have the advantage, but if you don't have the advantage and you are likely to lose the fight, as I said earlier, target the enemy's medic and hope that you can kill him before you die, and be sure to have your medic to flee as if you already died. I hate to admit it, but his uber is more valuable than your life, and primarily as a heavy, you're there to kick ass and protect your medic. So if in order to keep your medic alive, you gotta bite the bullet, I'm sorry, you're just gonna have to pull an iron giant and do what's right. Do your best to buy him some time, have him escape, and then regroup with them once you respawn. This also works against enemy ubers as well. Don't be afraid to try and body block with the Fists of Steel to buy your medic just a few more seconds to escape to the safety of your team. And that's just one example of a general strategy when it comes down to fighting against another heavy medic combo. But this is only in a situation where other players either don't have the time or the awareness to be able to intervene. But as we all know, usually you're not going to run into just a heavy and medic by themselves. There's almost always going to be more people in play than just two at a time. Now, one of the more likely situations you'll encounter in any game is a team fight. I define these as clashes with at least six to eight people. Usually, these are the meat of the conflicts where everyone is fighting someone and it's a little bit hectic. As I touched on earlier, Heavy does his best when he locks onto one target at a time. The reason why this is, is because the way he dishes out damage is through a continuous stream of bullets. Unlike other classes where they do burst damage by firing one shot at a time like a shotgun or rocket launcher that initially does a pretty hefty amount of damage, Heavy tends to chip away at others' health, which can give the enemy plenty of time to react, especially at a distance. So generally, as Heavy, it would benefit you the most to attack targets closest to you in the battle. There are very few situations where in a teamfight it would be more beneficial to an attack opponent that's further away than someone who's right on top of you. Also, for a rule of thumb, there are only three enemies that are an immediate threat to you. Sniper, Spy, and Demo. Now, when it comes to Spy, they're only an immediate threat if they're literally right on top of you. At that point, I'd prioritize them the most because you never know with hitboxes. Really, anything that can kill you at one shot should be your first prioritization in that moment, unless it's something else that can kill your medic. In that case, it should be whatever could kill your medic. Again, you want to keep them alive the most. But for simplicity, let's just say there's no Spy right on you at this moment, you should mostly aim to take out their heavy or any of their other high damaging classes to allow your team to advance. While, for your sake, your team should, emphasis on should, take care of the classes that can really mess you up like Sniper or Spy. Although it's heavy, you can take care of Spy pretty easily because they have to get close to you to kill you, and at close range you would tear right through them, so you just kinda gotta be a little aware there. Also, usually in a team fight, I'd like to run with a fellow medic and demo or soldier, whichever one is more reliable and willing to stick with the combo. This is because counters to soldier or demo, like Pyro, heavy counters fairly well, and then when there are classes that would counter heavy, soldier or demo can hold their own against. Like with a sniper, our soldier can just rocket jump up there and take out the sniper. Plus, since they output a large amount of damage, it gives your team this sort of group that just crushes everyone in their path. I would advise against running straight into the enemy team without a team of your own, but let's face it, sometimes the odds are against you. In situations where you are either by yourself or outnumbered, play much more passively, either by playing around med packs, which I'll get into in just a bit, or by getting some serious advantage, like a head high wall or catching the enemy off guard. But even then, I wouldn't expect to walk out of these situations. I would just hope to buy the rest of my team some time. That doesn't mean it's futile to retreat in some situations, but as the slowest class, I find it's better to hinder the enemy's team than saving my own skin. Ultimately, when it comes to team fights, they tend to be hectic, but as heavy, your goal is to obliterate their DPS and secure the objective. Keep in mind, as heavy, there are distinct things you can and cannot do, so it's very important for you to know your limits, especially in large conflicts. Heavy has his hard counters, and you just gotta be aware of these, like a god tier demo will probably chew right through you, and at that point, you're gonna either have to play much more passively, or just hope someone else can take care of them. Now, not every interaction with an enemy team, let alone an enemy heavy, will go the exact same way. Sometimes it's entirely dependent on the environment. Now, along with all the information I've previously mentioned, the last major aspect to think about when engaging another heavy is the specifics of the map in that particular situation. What I'm trying to say is that based on the part of the map you were in can drastically alter the outcome of a fight which seems like common knowledge, but it's often overlooked. A great example that I see a lot of new players failing to realize is that the payload is one of the most useful tools a heavy can have. Not only does it regain some health and ammo, but it's also a mobile head-high wall. 
the payload object is the perfect height for the heavy because your head just barely peeks over the edge, and as I said earlier, the source engine bug is one of the strongest tools the heavy has at his disposal. All the heavy has to do is sit right behind the cart, and he can do the normal amount of damage to your exposed body, while you can only dish out damage that hits his head. So if you are fighting against another heavy on the objective, I'd recommend getting as close as possible so you also benefit from the head-eye wall, or try and getting around the payload so it no longer functions as a barricade for him. Another map-specific tip is playing the med packs. People often forget that you can shuffle around when firing is heavy, and while you shuffle around you can pick up med packs close by. This seems really simple, but a lot of people forget it. If you're playing defense and you don't have a medic with you, don't fail to overlook this. It essentially buffs your health by either 60, 150, or 300 depending on the med pack you pick up. Just try not to pick it up too early, otherwise you kind of wasted its usefulness. However, personally, if I had to choose between standing near a med pack or getting a nice head-high wall, I'd have to go with the latter option, mainly due to the possibility of a scout or someone else swooping and stealing it when you need it most. But it's better than nothing. And that's really all there is to it. I think I covered the majority of the common situations that you'll be likely to run into in both casual and highlander matches. But don't be fooled, there is a lot of individual things that can swing the tide of battle when it comes to heavy versus heavy. Sometimes it can even be dependent on the ping of each player. Think about when you turn a corner and get killed by some hitscan weapons. But they should increase your chances of being victorious exponentially. I really hope this was informative to you all. Big thank you to everyone that was able to help me out with this video. Their channels are linked below, by the way. And I really want to thank you guys for watching. I know this was a very long video, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I hope you have a swell rest of your day, and as always, peace out.